Deuteronomy 5, verse 33. <laughs> King James Version reads, Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that you may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. I'm going to read that uh, Amplified Version also. And it reads, You shall walk, that is, live each and every day, and all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and so that it may be well with you and that you may live long in the land you will possess. So this morning our empowering thought is be brave. Be brave, be brave. And, and brave is going, I'm going to use it as an acronym this morning, brave, B-R-A. A V E. I'm going to use it as an acronym this morning. So be brave. So one of the questions uh, we hear uh, as preachers, our pastors, is uh, how do I walk with God? How do I uh, 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 walk with God? Oftentimes, those of us who are actively and intentionally trying to live to the glory of God, uh, find that when asking for help um, in, in our walk, trying to make sure we are on the right page or the right path, uh, the answers we receive really don't help us in our walk. It seems like sometimes uh, uh, nobody really know the answer. And so we are walking and, and people are telling us, keep praying. Okay, and so should I do this or should I do this? Or can I do this? Or what is what am I able to be? Uh, uh, what are my parameters in walking in this in, in walking this thing out? And so and, and and what? How far can I go and not get in trouble? Come on, somebody! Uh, our kids do that to us all the time. You think your kids and you know they're getting on my nerve. They're, no, they are checking out their parameters of operation. And so some of our kids are different than other ones. You have some who are going to stick to the center. And then you got one or two who's going to test every corner of the parameters of life. Why? Because they say, I want to know how far I can go before it get me. Come on, somebody. And then you got that one who's going to stay right in the middle next to you. And what are you trying to do? You're telling the one who's always at the parameters, get, get over here. And then the one who's close to you, you're trying to push them out. So you're sending mixed signals. So, so in our spiritual life, it is the same way. How do we walk? Uh, we have Jesus as our model who, who, who had walked this earth. And if you looked at his life, you would see there were incidents in his life that, that he was trying to figure it out too. Remember, uh, he wasn't even 13 years old. And his mom and dad had packed up the bags, the camels, and moved on. Jesus was still in the church teaching and they came and said man what you doing you know we were looking all over you and he said you know i must be about my father's business mm -hmm. but guess what he shut up got on a little camel and humbled himself to so he was trying to test his parameters too when he was in the garden of gethsemane he said what he said if this cup be removed from me you you know i i know all things are possible. You can remove it, but not my will, but your will be. So all of us have a will and, and a way of doing things. Even Jesus had one. Now, nobody ever asked the question, well, what was his will? If he says not my will be done, but your will be done. So what would have been Jesus's will? Now, you remember on the cross what he said, man, I can call a legion of angels and wipe this thing out, set this string and set. Y'all want to see a party. I'll show y'all a get together. 
And, and so we can see that even Jesus had a will, a desire. But he says, not my will, but your will be done. So, so he goes back and say, okay, so I know I have a will, God, but I want to do what you have called me here to do. What I want to walk this thing out like you want me to. All of us, I believe, have that desire in our heart to walk out this walk according to how God has purposed us. And, and that's not a hard thing. It's not a easy thing. It has nothing to do with that. We just want to please the one who saved us. That's all. That's as simple as it is. And all I want is some, can I get some direction on how to walk this walk and not offend somebody? How to walk this walk and offend somebody because I'm going to stand in my truth. So I saw all I need some little simple stuff. You don't have to get technical. I don't want to know about the seven and eight dimensions of heaven. And but Let's get back to the basic. Just let me to walk this walk so I can live my life to the fullest. Like the text says, that you may live and it will be well with you and that you will prolong your days. Come on, somebody. Who don't want to prolong their days? And so, so, so we're going to talk about the acronym BRAVE uh, uh, here. And, and, and it's going to be, I'm going to give you some simple, basic, simple ways to remember how to help you walk this walk. Is that all right? So we're going to start with the B, the B in brave. The B means boundaries. Tell somebody you got to have some boundaries. You cannot live victoriously without boundaries. You got to have some boundaries. So what's our boundary? The Bible. So we operate in the word of God, then there's no issues. But you got to have boundaries. Not only that, you must have boundaries for yourself. For those of us who are married, you have to have boundaries in your marriage. Your private life. And your church life. You got to have boundaries. You got to have boundaries in church. There's a, there is no reason that you are saying yes to everything that happens in church. And you got a family. I remember when I was growing up, you was in church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all day. Now, now, and, and they thought, and, and they serviced that they were serving the Lord. House cussing spirit almost got me that fast. Woo. House is tore up. Kids failing in school. But we are dedicated to the church. Out of balance as far as we can get. But we're going to make sure we serving on every ministry there's possible. Cause why? Because you have no boundaries. There's only one person that died for us, and that's Jesus. And he didn't make any little Jesuses for you to do it. So you have to have boundaries. Listen, you, if you can't do it, don't expect anybody else to do it. That's the law. If you yourself can't do it, don't expect anybody else to do it. That's the first line to know when you're setting boundaries. And so when you begin to set boundaries, you are setting boundaries in the areas so you know how I can operate. In order to set a boundary, you first have to know who you are. Know the truth of who you are. And so there you can set boundaries because you know what you like and you know what you don't like. Now, now, let me say this because uh, 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 Pastor V helped me with this. She says, when you set your boundaries, 
you can't keep redrawing the lines. Once you set your boundary, that's it. If somebody crosses that boundary, she said, and this is, I quote, <laughs> if the boundary is crossed, punishment must be swift and severe. Now, that's quotable right there. Why? Because you're going to let them know you don't cross this boundary. And I'm going to deal with you now. And, and so, so what do we do? So we have a, remember our children are growing up and they fall out in the store and you say, wait till you get home. They done forgot about that. Come on, somebody, and you get home, you done forgot about it because you got to put up the groceries and everything. You ain't even thinking. About it. So you have to deal with it right then. That's a boundary. Because the next time we go to the store, they won't be doing that. Come on, somebody. Now, when I was small, we all had to hold hands and walk through the store. So that means you ain't touching nothing because everybody hand is, come on, somebody. Everybody hand in somebody else's hand and you walking like that. And the two people on the end, the other hand that's loose is on the buggy. Come on, somebody. I dare you to let that buggy go and see what happened. That's how we grew up. Now, today, whew, Lord Jesus, they running all over the store. You're like, whoo, Lord, this whole store is the boundary. But you have to set boundaries for yourself. What will you do and what you will not do? Now, this is important to your spiritual walk. Because despite your thinking, your life is really one. I said those different areas, you have the boundaries because they are different. But this, your life is only one. It's just you. And so you need to set those boundaries and make those boundaries clear to whoever is around you so they'll know that it is a boundary. Y'all with me? And so, so you have to have boundaries. Tell somebody you got to have them. The R is reliability. Lord have mercy. Reliability. Can you be counted on? And so what is reliability? It's simple. You Can you be trusted to do what you say you're going to do over and over? That's reliability. So if you do it once, I, can, I should be able to trust you that you're going to continue in that fashion. And if you can't, you will make it known. That's being reliable. If you don't do it, don't expect others. If you are not reliable, don't make me reliable. Y'all with me? So if you can't be trusted, don't expect me to be trusted because that's you. And so you can't hold me to a standard that you don't hold yourself to. So you have to be reliable. Come on, somebody. That means you are going to do what you say you're going to do. Now, why is this important in the spiritual walk? Because I can tell you now, Holy Spirit have told all of you guys you got a gift. And who uses it in church? So that means there's a miscommunication somewhere. So the Holy Spirit is telling you to be reliable and you're saying, no. Ouch. <laughs> so, so, so you must be reliable in everything that you do. Now, I just messed this up yesterday. Pastor Fee said, Paul, go get me a paint tray. I did that part. 
came home, went on the computer, doing my little thing on the computer. I heard someone say, Paul! I said, hmm? Where the paint track? Uh, I, couldn't, I didn't complete the task. Who asked me to go get the paint tray? I did that part, came home, set it right on the counter, went back doing whatever I was going to do. And so I did not complete the task. So my reliability was in question. Am I right? Because I did not do what I was asked to do. That's how simple it is. Now, I'll tell you, I'm going to make it as transparent as I possibly can so you can get this. We're not talking about the angels and none of them. We're talking about us. And so you have to be reliable, which means that I got to carry out to the end what I say I'm going to do. You got to do it all the way to the end. To the end. Tell somebody to the end. Not two steps before the end. To the end, I got to complete the task. Why? Because somebody is waiting on me to complete the task so they can complete their task. And so if I delay, then they are going to be what? Delayed. You know that some our uh, blessings are tied up like that. You know that? Because I'm a delayer, my blessings are being delayed. Why? Because I'm a delayer and the pattern is set because the person who's supposed to help me get my blessing is being delayed because I'm delaying over here. So if I become reliable and carry out what I'm supposed to do, then that circle is going to come around because this person who is in Japan waiting for me to do what I'm supposed to do will be able to do what they're supposed to do, which will unleash all of those blessings that are tied up, being delayed in the spiritual. Are y'all with me? So your B is boundaries. Your R is reliability. Your A is accountability. Accountability. I can only trust you if when you make a mistake, you are willing to own it, apologize for it, and make amends if necessary. Let me say that again. This is what accountability means. I can only trust you if you make a mistake, you are willing to own it, apologize for it, and make amends as ne if necessary. Here is the two-way street. So the same way that you are expecting that, then you have to give people the same. You have to give them the ability to tell you, I messed that up. Not only give them the ability to say, I made the mistake, allow them to own it, and then allow them to apologize and make amends if necessary. It's both ways. So you can't expect it for everything you do and don't give anybody else no grace. That's how we walk. This is how we walk. So if you think about it, you should always have grace on your mind. Even, because the spirit almost got me, even if it ticks you off what they did. Have a little grace. Why? Because I need some grace. Come on, somebody. I might not need it right now, but I know somewhere down the line, I'm going to need some grace. So I'm going to give you a little grace to own up to your mess. And once you own up to your mess, okay, let's fix this. We good. Let's fix this. But the problem is we are so fleshly ego centered that we get mad with stuff and hold it forever. And then we worry about why we ain't got no friends. Because you mean and nasty. 
And so I would, and, and so what we do, because we say, well, I'm going to be Christian-like. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to stay away. Come on, somebody. Tell them you mean and nasty. And I would probably hang out around you, but you mean and nasty. And I don't want that in my life. But we don't want the, the, the trouble out of, not even trouble, the hurricane that comes from it. Why? Because when we are not spiritually mature, if somebody say that to us, we're going to go into a whirlwind and take it out on them. But let me tell you about you. Uh, no, 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 no. We talking about why y'all don't hang out with you. Come on, somebody. We're not talking about me here. I'm telling you why I don't deal with you. Now, if you don't want to deal with me, that's fine too. But that's not the issue right now. The issue is why I don't deal with you. And so now you have to accept that. And it's either true or not. 99% of the time is what? True. That's for all of us. We all got our little crazy ways. Come on, somebody. And depending on who it is, we hype it up. Come on, somebody. Let's, let's be transparent. I had a meeting with some preachers this week. And this gentleman was there. And I don't know why. I just didn't like him. Come on, somebody. Can we be... I just, I just looked at him and said, hmm, suck me right. Come on, somebody. And me, because I was sitting in the second hand next to the father, I'm going to figure it out. Come on, somebody. Have, is that, you been there? And so I'm here trying to figure out how, why I don't like somebody I don't know. There's the answer. You don't even know it. But I had the feeling. And so here's the spiritual battle. Was that me or was spirit trying to show me something? Now, because, <laughs> because we so holy, it ain't going to be us. <laughs> it's going to be spirit trying to show me something. That I got some stuff going on that needs to be fixed. Before I'm being a detriment to the kingdom. You need to deal with this stuff. You don't even know him. Why you got some feelings about somebody you never even met in your life. First time seeing how you develop feelings about him. So if I'm being triggered, it's not them. It's who? Me. So now I need to find out what in me that is like what he's showing. Because you can only see what you like. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? So you got to be accountable. Be willing to own up for your stuff. Be, if you messed it up, there's always consequences. But the consequences go a little easy when you say, well, look, I'm going to mess it up. Now, I know I told you I'll have it for you in three days. And this is the fourth day. So I'm a little late. Can I get a little grace? I just need 24. Something happened and I don't know that and I need a little. Bit. But you know what church folk do? Deep come pass and go. I didn't mean you. Did. I didn't know you mean this week. <laughs> well, it's a month late. Where is it? Oh, oh I'm going to get on it. No. Your accountability is, I can't trust you for nothing. So when you say you're going to, and so this is one of the great things the Navy taught us. I said, you tell somebody to do something, right? And then you said, now what did I say? So they have to repeat back because let me tell you something. You can talk all you want. People don't hear what you're saying. As you're talking, they are forming their own conversation of what you're saying to them. 
ain't got nothing to do with what you just said. And when you get your product back, you say, what is this? I didn't. So you say it. They repeat it back. And we establish some deadlines. Okay. Tomorrow. No. Tomorrow. And don't give tomorrow. You might have to give the actual date. Come on, somebody. Because you have to be accountable. And Lord knows, be accountable to yourself. You know you late. Why you delay? Why you won't even go and tell them? I, I got sidetracked. I'm sorry. You going to play like you the Holy Ghost. Nobody can see you. <laughs> Come on. It's only so many Sundays you're going to stay headed out from church. And then you won't even answer your cell phone. Come on, not even a text. Come on, you know I need my stuff. You don't even know what is on the back burner, why I needed it, who's being delayed while you play around. And that's why I say some of our blessings are all tied up because we... <laughs> Wretched. <laughs> okay, so you got your B. That's your boundary. Set some boundaries. Your R, be reliable. Your A, be accountable. Not for somebody else's stuff, for your own stuff. Remember, it might be an issue, but not your problem. Your stuff. Be accountable. V, you have to be vulnerable. Tell somebody you got to be vulnerable. Now, this is a little touchy because walking by faith makes you vulnerable. It opens you, it exposes you to everything because you are walking in the belief that God is going to do. Come on, somebody. So in the meantime, because we are human beings and we got that little nasty factor in us. Come on, somebody. You are going to see this person walking in faith. And because whatever reason, you don't know them, uh, you don't really like them, or uh, they look like something you did not have or whatever, you throw a ball at them to try wreck. Oh, I'm by myself. I'm the only one ever done it. I am? Sure. Then y'all need to come up here and finish this message. <laughs> Just being mean. That's fine. But I want you to understand that the being a person of faith makes you vulnerable. Because you're exposed and you're open to whatever is coming around because you are in the belief that all things are working to my good. And therefore, this person who's supposed to be a Christian knows that I'm a Christian. They are not going to try hurt me purposefully because purposefully will mean that I'm not walking in faith. Come on, somebody. All of us have church hurt, which we have identified as church hurt. The truth of the matter is not church hurt because the church didn't hurt you. It is what somebody else has done. And now, remember, because you have to go back to where you are accountable, you have to be willing to allow them to make up for their stuff. Well, you don't like them no way, so you that's going to be tough. I don't know if I have forgiveness in my heart. Come on, somebody. Not for them, everybody else. Now, isn't it amazing how the church, and once I finish this message, somebody's going to stand up here and open the door to the church and say, God will forgive you for all, but the church itself, uh, people in the church hold everything else against you. How is that even possible in the kingdom of God for us to say, God, I forgive you, but I ain't. 
And so, so you have to stand in your truth. That alone makes you vulnerable. Come on, somebody. Why? Because there are, first of all, I'm not going to talk about nobody outside of you. When you are trying to stand in your truth, your own mind telling you not to do it. Your own mind is challenging you on what truth is. And so you didn't even have to worry about haters or none of that because you have none. Those people are loving you to the next level, but you so caught up into what you've been taught, you think they're hating on you. But the only way God can get you to move is to put a sticky pin in you, somebody to make you move, to stick you, to push you to the next place in him. But you so focus on the person instead of being focused on where God trying to move me to. So you have to be vulnerable. So when you stand in your, in your truth and you are vulnerable, it makes it easy for spirit to lead and guide you. Not only that, it makes it easy for your gift to make room for you. Y'all with me? So tell somebody you got to be vulnerable. Hmm. You got to be have boundaries, be reliable, be accountable, and be vulnerable. Those are steps, four steps, first four steps to learning to walk and knowing that you're walking. And the last is the E. You got to have expectation. When you feel like this morning, times of uncertainty, emotional exposure happens. You're not sure what else you can do. You're tired. You dried up. You just like, I don't know what else to do. The Bible says stand anyway. Right? You what you're standing in, the belief that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. And so you have to have expectations. You have to expect that the promises of God is going to come to you. You have to expect that the blessings of God is going to overtake you. You have to have expectations. If you have no expectations, you are not walking in faith. Because faith is what you cannot see. So therefore, you have to expect what you cannot see to manifest into what you can see, which is truth. The word of God manifested. So if you have no expectations, tell somebody you might be in a little trouble. I'm not telling you you have to expect big. Some of us do, which is great. But you have to have some kind of expectation. You should expect God to do something. And, and, and I know the song said, if he don't do nothing else for me ever again, I'm good enough. I'm happy. I'm not. Because there's still a kingdom out there that he says I can have. And so while I am grateful that he has done, I'm expecting what he has not done. So you have to have an expectation in your life. Listen, your life is one with God. So as you are moving through your, whether it's work, school, you have to have an expectation where that next promotion at. You should be looking for the next step. You should be trying to see God blessing. You should so you say, well, I've done that and I anticipated God move and nothing happened. So keep moving. It just at that moment, it didn't happen. Come on, somebody. But there's a new moment now. I believe a little bit more about him today than I did yesterday. So today may be the day. 
So you have to have an expectation. Now, let me say this, because we are people of habit, especially we are a people. Y'all follow me? Of not having any expectations for anything. Come on, somebody. We have to change that. Because what he's done for somebody, he'll do it. So you got to have an expectation. I don't care who you're looking at. You know, I looked at, we was looking at the football game last night, me and uh, uh, Elder Lassiter, in the, the Alabama game. And I said, good God, there's hundreds of thousands of them jokers in there. Look at that red everywhere. I said, ooh, one Sunday like that. $20 a ticket, we would be set for life. Come on, somebody. I said, can you imagine that? last I call him Jamar when we home. And he was like, wow, yeah. Can you, I said, can you imagine me? I'm up on that stage. I'm, I'm down there in the little corner. And all of those people waving the West End flag. Ah, preach, Bishop! Come on, y'all. Y'all don't have those kind of little... Oh, come on. How many of y'all went to, yeah, if you haven't went to see Beyonce, you see the little clips from it. I mean, like, man, that girl got it going on. I wonder what it'd be like if I went across the stage. Come on, somebody. If she had me open up the prayer for her. I said, y'all don't. Okay, maybe I'm being too transparent. Y'all don't have that kind of. I mean, at all. I mean, I watched T.D. Jakes, and I said, now, what if I opened for him? What if I was the worship leader coming up to him? He ain't going to be able to preach because I'm going to preach before he get up there. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. Y'all don't have those kind of expectations in life. Y'all need to develop, develop those kind of expectations. Look, I was driving the other day and I saw the guy, he had on, uh, he had a, I don't even know what it was. I think it was, I don't know what kind of car it was. I was like, man, that thing is pretty. I don't even know what kind. I was trying to catch him. I was like, man, that thing is fast. He is flipping you. I was like, man, I only could see the color. And I was trying, I was driving the Tahoe. I mean, the Tahoe takes a minute to get his, he had to get his legs ready to run before he run and by the time he was getting his leg ready to run that guy was like four blocks ahead of me so i can't get i wanted to catch up and i'm not really into sports cars but i saw i glimpsed it and i said man what is that so guess what i'm still not into sports cars but that's possible if I get into them, because I've seen it, and so I'm going to see it again. I know that. Why? So the expectation is now in my mind, I'm looking for it. Come on, somebody. Not that I want to drive it or buy it, but I'm looking to see it again because I've seen it once, so I know I'm going to see it again. You have to have expectations in your life. You know what kind of life it is to get up every day? Groundhog. That's what it is. Get up every day, you go through the same old thing, you go back to bed, and you wake up the next day, what? Oh, here we go again. Uh, that's not a Christian life. That's not walking in faith. When you get up in the morning, you should be saying, okay, Holy Spirit, what's up today? How you going to blow my mind today? What should I be looking for? What should I be expecting? But for us, because we are people who have been built to get up and expect the worst to happen, we don't expect God to do nothing because we're looking for Satan everywhere we go. You better watch out because the devil, you know, he's around. Yeah, so is God. And what you focus on is what you're going to get. So focus on God and the goodness of God and see the goodness of God. Because let me tell you, he says, I said before you life and death. Come on, somebody. Choose life. So when you choose life, that means I'm looking for the good. It doesn't mean the evil is not there. It's that I'm looking for the good. Tell somebody, get some expectations. 
Romans 8 25 says but why but if we look forward to something we do not yet have we must patiently wait with confidence why are you going to patiently wait and you got to be confident because I know you're going to do it I'm, I know you're going to do it yes no and and as crazy as your little desires are they're still not big enough for God so he, I know he's going to do it. I know. And that's why some of us don't share none of our stuff because we know our stuff off the wall. Come on, somebody. But that's okay. That is okay. That is fine. That's how God created you to think the way you think because you're the only person going to think him in that way to make him move in that way. So it is okay. Remember when the cell phone first came out? That big old, can you imagine when he designed that? Can you imagine when he designed that, that this is where we would be? So your crazy thinking is okay. You have to expect it to happen. God said, I will withhold no good Thing. I'll give you the desires of your heart. Your desires are first placed by God to begin with because you don't even know what you want. So he has to put something in you to desire, show you the desire. Now you on track for the desire. So therefore, what you desire is coming straight out of God. Mm. So tell somebody to get some desires. Whew. So be brave. Tell somebody be brave. You have to have boundaries. Be reliable. Be accountable. And as hard as it is, you have to become vulnerable. And then have expectations you're telling God I'm hanging you out there if you don't do it it's not so much I'm gonna look crazy but you gonna look crazy because I told everybody you can do it come on somebody and so if I told everybody you could do it I'm certainly, they already think I'm crazy, so that ain't a far-fetched thing. But I don't want them to think you can't do what you say you're going to do. So get some expectations. Y'all good? Tell somebody, be brave. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Be brave. Be brave. That was a good word. Amen. We bless God for that word. Amen. And it takes something to be brave.